Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for inviting and also for showing the video of Melissa Marshall at the beginning of this session. That was really inspired me and I would like her to be here to understand whether I'm talking nerdy to her enough. Okay. And um, the beginning of my talk starts from the events that happened uh, two years ago on March 11 that I'm pretty sure they affected all of you here. But they also affected me professionally. After that moment, my professional life had a very quick and unexpected change. And so I started thinking how the decisions that were taken by the different country where we can live are affecting, are shaping the history that we are writing in this moment. And then I was starting thinking whether there is a common pattern, because we have so many different decisions, whether there is a common pattern to understand how people are deciding something. And my first very simple idea is People tend to decide and to go in the direction where they feel they are safer. But feeling safe can be objective or subjective, rational or irrational. For example, it's agreed upon that smoking is bad for health. But still, smokers tend to believe more to the story of the 99-year-old grandmother that was smoking 50 cigarettes a day, and they, not quit. they don't quit because they feel still they feel safe. Okay. So um, this happens, this uh, sa uh, safety that is deciding, that is uh, influencing how we decide is happening all the time. It's happening also now and today. When you came here in this building, you might have questioned whether this building is strong enough to sustain a big earthquake. So some of you might think, well, we are in Japan. It is well renowned. It is well renowned that they have the highest, the most advanced technology in buildings. So they might have check these structures against very extreme conditions. But even if you don't go in such detail, you have still the perception that this building resisted a very large earthquake two years ago, that it looks pretty new. So eventually, you come here, you enter, and I find you in front of me in this moment. So decision, when we assign sorry, a concept uh, of safety, has generally two components. One is logical, and one is emotional. In the Western language, the languages that I know, this difference is not very clear, it's not very distinct. When I started studying here in Japan, and then I started working, I was very interested that in Japanese, at least in the Japanese language, this is very clear. They have two different words. On one side, they have the anzen, which is your mind, your brain, your logical thinking. I like to see that one of the components of this kanji is the character of the king, which represents the authority, but the authority in the sense of something that has been already established before you could decide, as the safety regulation of this building was decided by somebody that you have never met and probably you will never meet. On the other side, there is the anshin, which is your heart, your feelings, emotions, and how society is reacting. And generally, how people tend to feel safe, they basically feel safer when there is something concrete, something uh, that you can touch in between. There's still the example of the building or cars and trains. And this is because they have the impression that they can understand how this is working. They have the impression that in case something is going wrong, they can control it somehow. But then they become much more suspicious and scared when there is something invisible, something that they, they cannot touch. This starts when we were little kids, we were afraid of the dark, and still, today, you might be afraid of a virus, of cancer, or, uh, or something that is becoming extremely popular, discussing nowadays, which is radioactivity. So radioactivity is generally associated with words like cancer or genetic modification. But radioactivity is completely natural is the clearest evidence that the world, that the universe is alive, is changing, is the reason why we can have so many elements with different properties. Radioactivity is uh, pervading our life inside and all the time. For example, from the universe, we constantly receive some cosmic rays that they look something you can see here in this plot. And when they enter the atmosphere, they scatter and literally become like a rain of energy, which is falling on this planet, is falling on our heads. And they are so energetic that they can penetrate iron for several kilometers. 
So there is no doubt that some of these rays are just touching my hand in this moment. But we don't need to go that far. You might have seen that I put here this very funny banana. So you might think, why this is here? This fruit is suggested for any healthy diet because it contains potassium. Potassium is an element which is used in your body so that cells can communicate with each other. And if you look close to our potassium atom, it will look like, like, uh, like something you can see here. This is the nucleus of a potassium. You can see some red balls, which are the protons, some blue ones, which are the neutrons, and some of the potassium inside here is, contains one neutron more. So this atom is uh, naturally unstable, so it has a life. It tends to change. And so depending on the lifetime of this atom, one of these neutrons will become a proton and emit some radiation, emit some energy under the form of heat. And this doesn't happen only here, it happens all the time in our body. And if you count, we counted how many decays of this kind of reaction happen in your body, and there are almost 5,000 times per second, every second, constantly. But still, this is not associated to any cancer, or to any genetic modification. So you might ask, why is he saying these kind of things? Obviously not because I want to stop the market of a banana, obviously, right? But for two main points. The first one is that I try to show how if I can describe something which is invisible to you, a little more concrete, your perception might change. And the second one is that somebody, starting from this point, just went a little farther ahead. And this is the pioneering work that was started by this group called the Panisperna Boys, that is, is not really an Italian boy band, but it's just a group of uh, scientists, Nobel Prize, and they started thinking and answering one very critical question, which is, now that I understand that some atom has the tendency to change, can I control when this happens? Can I control when this little energy is emitted so that maybe I can use it to do something good? And so they tested every atom on the planet from hydrogen until they reached a very large one, uranium, and they had the great idea to toss a small neutron towards the nucleus and just wait for what was happening. And what was happening was really astonishing because all the instruments at that time just went crazy they managed to split this atom, create two different ones, emit new neutrons, and emit gamma rays, and so much energy that from only a single gram of this uranium, you can light up around one billion light bulbs. But most importantly, what they found is that this reaction is completely controllable. You can start it up whenever you like, and you can shut it down also as easily as closing that hand. So where is the trick? The trick is that these two products, Atom here, that were created, they didn't disappear. They're still there. And they behave exactly as the, pota as the potassium is in this little banana over here. They have their life. They need to change according to their time. We cannot control them. So. The main point is that when we put our hand over there, when we started this reaction, we created a man-made system. A man-made system which looks like something like this. This is exactly a representation of the power plant in, uh, in Fukushima. And what we need to know is how, you need to understand how this thing, now that we created, how this thing it's working, well, how it's working when everything it's okay, and how it's working when nothing is working correctly. Okay, so what we can do today, also thanks to the uh, power of uh, computation, is to study a virtual accident. So we can manage to have an accident on the computer so that maybe if we can understand why it was created, how it will develop, we can manage to avoid this kind of accident, okay? But still, there is always the duality of, of the things. So two things can always be watched from two different points. So here, I try to show two videos that represent just one portion of this accident. 
Can you see the, video, uh, the difference from these two videos? On that side, there is something very clear. You have the perception that there is some steam which is flowing into the water. The water is boiling, the color is red, is rather, is a, probably very hot over there. So this is an animation. It was created to, make, to transfer something to you, to make you understand, to make you feel something. On the other side, there is the work that we do, which is a computation. Behind this more difficult thing to understand, there is a huge matrix, which is filled with equations which are representing the world and how the world is behaving. When you develop some, something like this, you are constantly talking with the nature and asking, am I doing this correct enough? And the nature might answer, well, you know, so far so good, but I think you can do much better than this. And then you start years of research and research until at a certain point you need to stop. When you feel satisfied, when you say, okay, now this is good enough. I don't have enough time to do that more. Okay, but still there is my decision. When do I feel satisfied? It's decided by me. I am the king now. Okay? And another point is, you might argue, wait a second, you didn't have such technology 40 years ago when this power plant was built. So obviously it was not safe. But safety is not absolute concept. It's not either black or white. This happens all the time. How scary was an airplane 50 years ago? And how better is going to be in 100 years? So I know that this is almost a never, never ending process. But this is always the case when we have something like growth or evolution. When will we feel satisfied of our technological progress? Where is the finish line? I cannot see the finish line. It looks very tiring. And um, I'm, I know that we, it looks like we went back to, to the beginning and I was not able to write a, a mathematical equation what, of answering what safety is. I couldn't give a very clear answer. But what I got, at least, even though my career is, very, is relatively short, but what I got in these years is that uh, we got something much more valuable. Because safety, or try to guarantee safety, it's a continuous tendency to improvement so that we can give the chance and the example to the next one to do better than what we do. Thank you very much.